Greetings Duplicant and welcome to The Breach. In today's episode we're going to look at SPOMs, or self-powered oxygen makers. Every base will eventually need to move away from algae oxygen generation or something of that ilk into a more renewable style of oxygen production. This will involve electrolyzing water and using the hydrogen to power the electrolyzer. This SPOM is not my design, it comes by Nicholas Rodriguez via the YouTube uh, Francis John. On screen you can see two of the self-powered oxygen makers, the half Rodriguez and the full Rodriguez. In the description I'll put a link to a blog post showing you the build. In the full Rodriguez you can think of it as two separate elements, the bottom section where it's electrolyzing the oxygen and collecting and then the upper section which is the power generator. These don't actually need to be connected as I've shown, they could be side by side depending on your build requirements for your base. So the full Rodriguez can produce nearly 3 kilograms of oxygen a second, so that's 30 duplicants. To build this we're going to need access to materials like gold amalgam and copper metal. The gold amalgam for dealing with the high temperatures in this area and the copper metal for not only the automation but all the, also the power cables that you can see in this slide. There's a very good chance that the water supply is either going to be salt water or brine or polluted water so we're going to need to filter this before we feed it into the electrolyzers. When you initially get a Rodriguez set up you're likely still to be dependent on some farming and therefore you're going to need to control the temperature of the oxygen. So here I'm imagining that I'm pumping in uh, cold polluted water at about minus 10 degrees and I'm using it to cool the oxygen as it leaves the Rodriguez. So I'm using copper pipes near to the gas pumps. The liquid then leaves the Rodriguez to go to refining, doesn't matter whether it's polluted water or salt water, and then the water is returned to the electrolyzers. We only need one pump for the hydrogen. The hydrogen is pumped up through some copper pipes to exchange the heat with the transformers, batteries and generators themselves. This setup produces more hydrogen than it requires and has an overflow to a, another hydrogen generator. You do want to make sure this excess hydrogen is burnt off. You do not want it backing up in the system and being pumped into your base because you're likely using some of this oxygen to feed your atmospheric suits and atmospheric suits need repairing if they're filled with hydrogen and not oxygen. As I forgot to take a screenshot of the automation wires in the sandbox, here is the Rodriguez in my actual base. The atmospheric sensors at the bottom are set to above 450. The hydrogen atmospheric sensor is set to above 250. To prime a Rodriguez for long-term use, you need to run it at full tilt. You can tell when the Rodriguez is primed because the section here no longer has any oxygen in it. It is either a vacuum or it contains hydrogen. Once this has occurred and you do not allow any hydrogen to back up there will no longer be any chance of hydrogen getting out of the system through the lower pumps. As you can see to start the Rodriguez up I've attached some cold generators. I also have a gas filter to make sure that only hydrogen is travelling towards the hydrogen generators. These will all be removed as soon as the system is primed and ready to go. Here we have a gas and a liquid bridge. They both work exactly the same and they're extremely powerful. As you proceed further into the game, it's not about not having enough resources. It can be about controlling overabundance of resources. The arrows on the bridge show which direction the gas or liquid is going to flow. But once the gas or liquid can no longer flow in that direction, the secondary pipe works as an overflow. We use this on the Rodriguez to siphon off the extra hydrogen so it doesn't back up into the system. We can then use this extra hydrogen in hydrogen generators elsewhere on the base. I've highlighted again the area that needs to be full of hydrogen to prime the system. It 
it will normally take a lot longer than that but due to fun times with editing software and recording software I lost most of my footage but now we have our system set up and now we just need to remove the coal generators and the gas filters etc and set it up with an overflow into some hydrogen tanks to give me a few minutes before I build a hydrogen power plant. Got to keep the area tidy. Hopefully you can see it as the hydrogen backs up, the gas will overflow into our tanks. Thank you for watching and as always I'll see you on the other side.